Welcome to Outdoor Auto, my name is Nathan Mueller. Today we are going to talk about off-road toolkits. And by the end of this video, the goal is to provide you with a checklist to help you build an off-road toolkit or to augment your already existing off-road toolkit. Now, there are about four stages that people go through in the process of building toolkits. We're gonna cover those really quickly. Two of them are good and two of them are really bad. We're gonna try to help you jump to the right ones and avoid the pitfalls that we have all went through. Maybe this will save you some money. Okay, so stage one. Stage one is this guy. We all know this guy. Uh, you brought your tools, right? Yeah, of course, got them right here. We're gonna die. Okay, so stage two. Stage two is what I like to call the starter pack stage. Stage two is a perfectly fine place to be for a little while. Let me explain. In stage two, starter pack is where somebody goes and generally buys like a plastic case like this that has a whole bunch of tools inside of it. It says it's a mechanic tool set and you go, I hope I'm good. I bought the plastic thing, has full tons of tools in it. Means I'm good, right? And the thing is, it kind of does mean you're good because the reality is your tool bag should really in a lot of ways be a reflection of your actual individual ability as a mechanic. Now, some people are going to argue with me in the comments and say that's definitely not true. You should always have a super advanced toolkit because even if you don't know how to use those tools, maybe somebody on your group does. Two things I would say about that. One is if your group happens to have a master mechanic, they already probably have a full set of tools with them. And that is one note I would tell you guys. When you go in group trips, make sure to coordinate with the group and see what everyone has. So then you don't all have to be carrying the same things. Cause like I said in one of my past videos that you should definitely watch on payload, almost every overlander is running their trucks way too heavy right now. And that does a lot of wear and tear on your axles and suspension. So lighten up your load if you can. If, if you are going solo, bringing a toolkit that matches your ability level is probably good enough. I will say there are a couple exceptions. Here's what I mean by that. So I drive, this is the Tundra right here. The Tundra happens to have a 39 millimeter axle nut, which is a really weird size. It's not gonna be in almost any standard size. So I need to get a 39 millimeter socket like this, and I need to add it to my kit. If you're in a Tacoma, interestingly enough, what's stock on a Tacoma is a 35 millimeter, so you'd wanna add that to your kit. But also, if you've ever done any aftermarket work to your suspension in the front and changed any of your axle stuff out, then the aftermarket stuff is all almost always 36 millimeter. Check your vehicle. Lots of different vehicles that have lots of different sizes. The other one you're gonna want is you're gonna want a flare nut wrench for your brake lines. I'm driving Toyotas mostly, and they, I believe, are almost all 10 millimeter. That is a tool that you can buy on Amazon for all of like four to five dollars. You don't need to buy a whole entire set because you'll never use it. So I just have one flare nut wrench. You do wanna know your vehicle and carry anything specialty that goes along with it. The other catch there is if you've modified your vehicle and added things to your vehicle, it could use vastly different stuff than standard Toyota sizes. So for example, I added an Expedition 1 bumper to the rear of my car. I need this one and a half inch socket, which is a huge socket. This is the one I need to be able to take that apart and service those, so I actually have one of these in here as well. So let's talk about this. You go from stage one, no tools, to stage two. You are now a responsible adult traveling the off-road. What will happen is as you increase your abilities and your knowledge increases, you will be tempted to start building a better starter kit. And that's great. That's exactly what I did. My starter kit graduated from this DeWalt case to this tool roll bag. So I'm gonna share with you guys in true budget style sense, um, this is a bag that I got that's called Rugged Tools off of Amazon. Um, it's held together. It, you know, has frays on the edges of things. It's, it's not as fancy and nice as the nice bags. Um, it has the same things as pouches, different types of pouches. Flips over, has your holder for your wrenches and a couple see-through pouches. I've been able to take everything that I needed out of this and pretty much fit it into two and a half pouches here. What I ended up finding out when you're in the starter kit method is you buy one of these, you stick it under your seat and you think, I'm good for everything. And then you realize none of these really actually have a very complete setup for 
side of the road repairs. The other thing is a lot of these come with a bunch of stuff that you don't need. So then you're carrying a bunch of extra weight. Let me show you what I mean. I drive a Toyota, so everything's metric. That thing came with a full standard kit as well as metric. It also came with quarter inch sockets, three eighths and half inch sockets with a ton of duplication between all of those. So this whole mess right here, this is all the stuff that came in that system that I didn't need. I'm a big organization fan. The more organized you are, the less you lose tools. We have, this is the electrical pouch. I have spare wire. I have these funky little connectors that actually have metal in the middle, so I can use a lighter to shrink wrap it and solder it. These are nice and quick for road size repairs. Uh, you got a lighter in here. You've got your normal strippers and pliers, um, cutters, and then you got spare fuses for your vehicle. Make sure you carry the right fuses for your vehicle and the right sizes. Uh, moving along, jumping into here, I've got a hammer. Um, I, of course, have two ratchets, my three eighths and my half inch. One thing I will tell you about this is like these are the ones that came with that DeWalt plastic set. When you're picking out your own, this is probably the worst two that you could ever end up on planet Earth. They made this. Super beefy looking, and I guess, I don't know, for style purposes or something, but this has way more metal than you possibly need. So this is just tons of extra weight. Um, I have ratchets that weigh half as much as these and are stronger because they actually have better components up here. So pay attention to weight when you're picking out tools. These are just stupidly heavy ratchets. Here's my little adapter for my quarter inch. Um, and then I've got, of course, all your different um, extenders. Uh, it's wise to have a wobble extender. If you don't know what that is, you can look it up. The end of a wobble extender is kind of like more rounded here and it makes it to where you can stick a socket and it can go at little angles for some of those hard to reach places. So there's my drivers. Hop into here. I have all the screwdrivers. So I essentially have a Phillips and a flathead, large size, a medium size. I have stubbies for each, you know, this is a medium, this is a large size, this is a stubby. I do it for each different type. Um, and then I carry one of these. Obviously you can use these for hose clamps. And then it also works for all the other crazy heads. So I carry things like this just in case you run into some torques or really random weird square nuts or all those kind of weird things like that. I've got a couple punches in here. I've got a big chisel in here for hammering on things really hard. Um, and then I got a couple files in there for a chainsaw. When did that fall off? Making YouTube videos is harder than people think it is. Okay, so next we've got pliers. Pliers, we have the ones that get used the most. Needle nose, channel locks, normal pliers, snips. You've got your vice grip style pointies and standard vice grip. Uh, and then actually a really tiny little guy as well for getting into nice hard to reach places. That is just a mix match. Like every single one of these is probably a different brand because this was a kit I built myself because that Dewalt kit and their average kit that you're gonna buy in a store that comes in a big plastic kit never ever really kind of covers all the little pieces that you might actually need in a good starter kit, usually. Um, over here, is of course my sockets. So I've got my half inch sockets. I've got my three eighths inch sockets. I run them in both deep and shallow. And I have these organizers. Again, I buy, I tend to spend the money on tools normally. And like these organizers, I think were $10 for a set of like three or four of them on Amazon. They work great. Um, I like having them this way because it's easier to keep track of whether or not I'm missing sizes on a lot of these. Um, I also have an extra in the bottom of here, um, two different size spark plug sockets. Over here, I've got zip ties. Honestly, use these to fix more things on the road than most things. And then a full set of Allen wrenches. So that's the inside of the bag. Then it has this handy little flap over here 
it's got all my wrenches. Now, one thing that was interesting, that DeWalt set comes with duplicates or even triplicate of almost every size in sockets. But then when it came to wrenches, it had actually very few wrenches and it was missing several critical sizes for Toyota. So I had to augment the set of wrenches with other, like, I don't even know what this is, Team Mechanics. Um, other off-brand, just random wrenches that I had laying around. So I have my full set of not skipping sizes of wrenches um, from 10, all the way to what i think 21 and then of course crescent wrench and then a smaller one as well crescent wrench thumb wrench who calls it a thumb wrench is that canadians somebody was telling me their thumb wrenches the other day and i was like i never heard of that in here i have a multimeter for doing testing if you have major electrical issues and then um, this just finishes off the full set of sockets the longs and the shallows so that's my, that was my starter toolkit. Um, there was still a few things I added to this. This is not a recovery kit. I have a full recovery bag as well. And then I also have a full medical bag for like first aid. And then I also have my air up, air down kit. That's its own little bag that's inside the car that's really easy to grab and use all the time. Okay, so really quick, we're gonna talk extras. We already talked about sockets specific for your axle nuts and other custom things that you have. Make sure you have those. I get a case like this that's very hard to open so it doesn't spill. Um, and it is full of spare parts, nuts and bolts that cover all the different random accessories on my vehicle. So if you have a rooftop tent, have extra bolts in here for it if it ever wobbles loose. For your uh, awning, for your roof rack, for your solar panels, anything like that, Just carry extra parts in here. I have extra valve stems in here for tires. I have Loctite in here. I have a little tube of JB Weld in here. It's handy stuff to have. Um, as far as other fluids, brake cleaner's not bad because that's how you can get a tire back on. If you break your bead, WD-40 is always nice to have. I preferably grab the smaller bottle than this so you don't take up so much room. It's good to have a few straps. Um, I like the ratchet straps because they come in handy all the time for holding things down that maybe broke off. Um, these are ones made by NRS. They're available on Amazon. They're easy to get. They're actually very cheap. Um, at least one or two heavy duty ratchet straps are great because the ratchet straps you can use for all kinds of crazy things uh, around involving your axle. If you have mega damage, um, these can save your bacon. Um, at least one C-clamp to be able to compress things is not a bad idea. For tapes, I usually have some duct tape. I usually have some of that tape, I forget what it's called, that you can try to use to repair broken hoses. Um, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, depending on how bad your hoses are. You're gonna notice I'm not showing you my spare parts for my car. That would be a totally different kit. That would be dependent on what type of trip I'm going on. I have everything from spare entire CVs for my Tundra, um, all kinds of stuff, but I don't take those on every single trip. It depends on where I'm going. Um, so yeah, a couple different types of tape. Duct tape, this is two-sided tape. I don't know, it just comes in handy. Um, wire, some bailing wire, a couple different types of wire, a little, you know, it doesn't take up a lot of space, but bringing some bailing wire is not a bad idea. Um, a tiny flashlight that is really bright, that is rechargeable, that is magnetic, can save your butt working on a car underneath of it at nighttime. This is honestly, this one's by Wubin. Um, I'm not vouching for it, it's just magnetic, it works, it's really bright, it's rechargeable. I think it's also on Amazon. Um, getting a good crowbar that's full tang so you can pound on the end and use it to do different things is a good idea. This is my wrench. This is for like tie rods, uh, just brutal things that are really hard to work on. This one is a more expensive one because this is a snap-on. A lot of people, instead of bringing this, just bring a regular old pipe wrench. So I love this. This is a lot more usable and user-friendly, but um, pipe wrench would totally work. You're gonna want, obviously, your tire plug kit. I would get a smaller one than this. I can't believe how many years I've carried this. This thing is so huge and uses up so much space. And then finally, this is a battery jumper. There's two things you gotta remember with a battery jumper. It's no use to you if it's not charged. So ideally, I, like in here, I run a power cord underneath my seat. So I can leave this underneath my seat and I can actually leave it in charging generally most of the time. Uh, so then when I do finally end up needing it, it will be fully charged. 
Think about it, you can have the greatest vehicle on planet Earth, but if you can't get it started and you're out there solo because you have a dead battery, you are stranded. So get a good one. This one is the Zeus by Uncharted. There's many different types out there. Um, this one's kind of cool because it has power ports, so you can actually use it as a battery pack as well if you want to but um, there's tons of them out there available. That would be the extras that I kind of include for a fairly comprehensive starter kit. If this is too intimidating of a process to build all of this out, but you want to be in a solid stage two situation where you have a very adequate starter pack, you need to check out this bag. This bag is by Dect. Uh, the same guys that make the drawers for trucks. I've done a review of them way back in the day when I had my gray truck. Um, I paid full price for those. I'm not associated with Deck at all, actually. But they heard that I was doing a tool video and they asked me if they could send me a tool bag. Um, I said, sure, I love tools. Um, I, but I actually did, had no idea what they were sending me. And in my brain, I was thinking Deck doesn't even make tools. So I, I really didn't have high expectations, but it turns out Deck partnered up with Boxo Tool. Oh yeah, by the way, when they said they were gonna send it, I emailed them back and I said, send me two so I have one for a giveaway. We're gonna be giving one of these away uh, next month in the Patreon page, actually. So if you haven't checked out our Patreon, there's a bunch more videos over there, all kinds of cool stuff. Check that out. We're actually opening up the Discord chat that we have over there that used to be private just for Patreons. We're now gonna have a channel called The Lounge that's gonna be public and anybody can join. So you can hop in there and discuss builds and all kinds of fun things like that. Um, so there'll be a link for the Discord below. But anyhow, back to this bag. Uh, this bag actually blew me away. So this bag is just like that, except for better. And if you don't know how to go collect all those tools and buy each one and you're not sure if you're getting a good enough quality wrench or a good enough quality uh, driver or, or whatever, this bag is so unique in that it is a nice bag, but it comes with all the tools already in it, and it's made specifically for the tools that are in it. I hadn't really seen anybody in off-road that was making a tool bag plus all the tools. This thing is incredibly well thought out. I was happy because it has these, like the more expensive bags out there, it has all these Velcro bags that are removable. This one just only comes with gloves in it, so this one has a lot of extra room where you could actually put some of your extra parts, screws, nuts, bolts, things like that. So you actually have room to expand inside of this bag. Um, so there's that. It came with this. This is their tire repair kit. It's just as complete as mine. Um, but look, it uh, uses up almost no space, which I love. This is their electrical bag. It comes with a circuit tester, you know, electrical tape, some nice little snips for um, cutting wires and a much better wire stripper than what I actually have. So mostly I would just add my multimeter, my wire and my soldering little guys to this and my fuses. It has this roll. I have this open so you guys don't have to watch me um, open everything because everybody always tells me to go faster in these videos than I'm trying to. What I loved about this is it's labeled. That just made my day. So you unroll it, it has these Velcro things down here, Velcro up here, whole entire thing's labeled. Here's all your wrenches. It has all the important sizes for Toyota already covered. I don't even have to add a single wrench to it. It's got a big crescent wrench, just like the one that I had in my kit. It has your screwdrivers. It has both Torx keys as well as Allen keys. Um, it's got a tire pressure tire gauge. You've got a big ratchet that is somehow longer than my other ratchet, yet still lighter. Love that, that's your half inch. Then you have your 3.8, so no quarter. They already knew not to waste time. They've got a punch in here. This is great if you're working on your axles, you're actually gonna need something like this. They even have a better punch than what I have in my kit. Uh, you got a hose clamp driver. You have your tire valve core. So you can work on your tires and repair your tires. Um, you've got your extensions. And what I also love is all the bigger stuff that they have is impact. So you can actually use an impact with this. And then they even had a nice long breaker bar. 
So all of that is labeled. What I love is when you go and work on tools in the mud and dirt, then when you come back to here, you think you put everything away, you can look really fast and take inventory, see if you're missing any tools. So this is a phenomenal kit. Oh, we missed this. This is all your sockets. I love how they did this, look. This is so crazy. Check this out. So you have all your sockets, the bigger sizes are impact, and then check this out. It actually has a 35. So if you're a Tacoma driver, if you're driving a stock Tacoma, this even already has your axle nut, which is incredible. Um, and then it has all of your specialty ones that are all the sizes for tires. So there you go. This one has the Velcro on it that does hold it in place in here. So that's one side of this. The next side really quick. Remember how I said all the DeWalt ones, they never, they, they have a bunch of stuff that you don't need. There was nothing in here that I didn't need. And look how complete this is. Channel locks, vice grips, better needle nose pliers than mine. These pliers are actually really nice. Uh, clippers and pliers, snippers, scissors. This is a really good complete like bag for pliers. Really does have most of everything that you would need in there. Then you have in this one, look at that, ball pin hammer, dead blow hammer, and pry bar. Also, coolest pry bar ever, because it's adjustable, so you can adjust the angle. So even if you got to get it down into something, and then you have to fold the pry bar out to be able to pry, it has that, and it's extendable, doubles as, I don't know, late night security. Pretty pretty cool little thing. I've never even seen anything like this kind of pry bar, but it's pretty great. The other thing is you're gonna see there's a lot of extra room in this pouch to add in your specialty items, like my 39 inch socket will fit in this case. It is a very durable case. I will admit it is a much nicer case than my $20 one from Amazon. And it's gonna sound expensive, but you have to remember, it is a really good bag and all the tools. So like for me, I bought the DeWalt set and then I had to augment it with a bunch of other sets, including a tire repair set. This one I think is 500 and something dollars and it has pretty much covered all of my main tools in a much better bag with better labeling and better organization. So these guys blew me away. I haven't seen anything like this on the market. This is a great starter kit. This is a great place to be. You're gonna augment it with the same stuff that I told you to augment that case with, and you're good to go. Okay, so let's talk about stage three. Stage three is what I like to call the collector. Let me show you what I mean. There we go, the collector stage. We'll weigh this, but I'm pretty sure this is over 150 pounds of tools. So the problem with the collector is when you get this crazy notion that you will literally be prepared for anything that could ever happen on planet Earth. You end up with these huge bags like this one. Instead of checking the bottom of this bag to see if you already have that one wrench in there, you just throw another one in and then you throw another one in and then pretty soon one day you go to clean this thing out and you find out that you have seven pairs of vice grips in the bottom of it. This gets out of control. Um, and this is a stage where you graduate into really fast when you're trying to get really serious about overlending and really knowing how to do your bush mechanics. You end up in this world and this world is out of control. The only difference between this and stage four, which is like a full expedition kit that's organized, is actually organization. It's knowing exactly what you have, exactly what you need for your vehicle, and slimming this all down. It's like backpacking. You don't bring this tire kit. You bring the smaller one. You gotta start eliminating some things. For example, I don't bring my drill with me anymore. Um, I used to bring a Sawzall even. That's not even on here. I brought a Sawzall. And we actually use the Sawzall a lot. But instead, I got rid of my drill. I got rid of my Sawzall. And I only carry my grinder now. Um, I don't think I've been on a long Baja trip yet where we haven't used my grinder. There are certain scenarios where a grinder just simply can be used to cut so many different types of things that I still find it valuable. I don't find this valuable for your starter kit people, but if you're for buying and you're stuck in a really bad spot, 
Um, you can use this to cut broken axles so you don't have to take it all apart on the side of the road. You can keep driving on three wheel um, and protect your stuff. So things like that to be able to get out and get to a safe zone, these come in handy for that kind of thing. This kit needs to be bigger than the starter kit, but it doesn't need to weigh 150 pounds. Don't do this to yourself. I am curious how much this all weighs, so I'm gonna weigh it really quick. Put guesses down below. Wow. Okay, so all of that weighed 100 and 39.2 pounds. Okay, so let's talk about stage four. I call this stage being dialed. Um, I really feel like I'm probably not qualified to talk about it because as you can see, I was very recently a train wreck. The other thing that's hard to talk about this stage of, of a dialed toolkit for advanced trips and advanced mechanics is it is so very specific to your actual vehicle that you're driving. At the end of the day, this stage is so geared towards your individual vehicle and your skill level as a mechanic, I can't tell you exactly what you need. I hope you found this video helpful. Don't forget to join our free Discord where you can talk about builds and probably find answers from the community. If you want to support the channel, consider buying a hat, subscribing, or joining our Patreon. Thank you and see you next Sunday.